Phil Taylor was imperious again. Double 18 gets it done against Mervyn King, who played very well himself. Nine legs to three. Let's have a look at how the draw shapes up. Don't suppose anybody's particularly relishing the thought of playing Phil Taylor. It'll either be Wayne Mardle or Mark Walsh in the quarterfinals. Baxter and Thornton in that half of the draw too. Let's hear from the power. He's with Ned. Well, Matt, I've just broken the news of what his average was to the man. 113.9. Thank you. you know... Hiya, Matt, I'm waving to you. <laughs> well, I, I didn't, well, I didn't 113. know. 113.9, yeah. But Mervyn, do you know what Mervyn is? He's a real, real fighter. I'll tell you what, if he'd have been a boxer, God help you, because he just does never gives in. And that's what you've got to do. You've got to do them averages to beat people like Mervyn King. You know, he's, he's, he's up and coming. He's going to get better and better and better. I think he's learning every tournament. You know, I, I've, I've had the luck to beat him a couple of times. Last, but he's beat me a couple of times as well. He's a cracking player. Yeah, and um, you say that, I'm hearing now his, yes. average, his average is 101, so that says something about <laughs> the fact he beat him 9-3. For, um, yeah. for Mervyn, that isn't that good, to be honest with you. He's, he's, he will be, honestly, in the, ne in, the, in the next few months, he will be in the top five. Believe me, he will. You talk about his rate of improvement. What about your rate of improvement? I mean, I'm, I, I, yeah, I've been well, improving yeah, but, for 20 years. Yeah, but I mean, uh, looking at you there, you wanted to get that done before the second commercial break, as the commentator's pointed out. I mean, it irritates you when you give up three legs like that, doesn't it? Not, not so much irritates me. I'm, I'm trying to beat the player. That's what I'm trying to do, as quick and as, as fast as possible, you know, because what happens is, with, with players, you start laying them in and they, and they start gaining confidence. And that's what happens. I mean, the 1-4-1 one one he took out after it hit 180, one, Tom 180, was, the, I think, the best shot I've, I've seen in my career. I mean, I've played some matches in my career. I've played Dennis Priest at his best and all of them. And that was some finish under that pressure, believe me. It was, it was a, what, probably the best finish I've ever seen. It's interesting you say that, Phil, because so many players will say, I don't concentrate on what the other player's doing, I concentrate on what I'm doing. But actually, you're saying, no, if, if he raises his game, you need, to, you need to counteract that. So you're telling me, if you go on the ring with Mike Tyson when it's his best, you'd say, I'll just, I'll just play the board. Yeah. No, unfortunately, you don't. You play the player. Whoever says, get in there and play, just play the game, just play the board, you can't. You play the player. I play the player every time. That's what I do. Whether anybody else does it differently, I don't know. But believe me, when you get when you get in against Mervyn King or you get in against Barney, you know you're going to get a good game. It's no good saying, "Well, I'll just play the board." Rubbish. You've got to, you know, it's a reaction against a reaction. Believe me, these are good players. They're, they're tough players to beat. You know, I'm I'm very lucky, fella, that I'm I'm still in. It's it's a tough game. It's a ruthless game, and uh, I'm doing all right. You know what I mean? I'm doing all right. I don't look at me back because otherwise I'll retire. But I'm doing all right. What gets me is the way you, we see you in the practice room and you're a t totally different man. You're just joking well, with the rest of them. I, um, but when you come on, yeah. there's something that clicks in. You're in some sort of a zone, some space. You look calm, Phil. Yeah, yeah. practicing is practicing. I mean, why, why be, you know, why be miserable or, or so much dedicated while you're practicing? Because it doesn't matter up there. But when you're up there, there's a different kettle of fish. That's when they, you know, it's no good being so aggressive on the practice board. Wait. Save your energy. That's what you've got to do. Who do you fancy next briefly? 5 1, Walsh. You know what? It's going to be a tough end, this one. I think Wayne's up for this, and I think Walsh is up for it as well. So um, I'm going to go for the draw. Kick back and enjoy the, enjoy, yeah, yeah, enjoy the rest of the action. All right, cheers. It's going to go to the last leg. OK. That's we'll take I you think. at your word. Excellent. Cheers, Phil. Well played. Thank you. He's in imperious form, as I say. Let's check on the uh, match stats, shall we, for Phil Taylor and indeed Mervyn King, which were both. A joy to read, really. Look at that, both well over 100. 114 nigh on for Phil. And actually, Mervyn King's checkout rate, when he got a chance to check out, was extremely high, three from five, but Phil, nine from 17. Impressive all by itself. And he doesn't give you a lot of chances, I think it's fair to say. Alan Warren a little watching with me. I was thinking then, actually listening to him talk, like golf and tennis, where the standard of overall competition has gone really high, yeah. to dominate in darts, where there's so <clears> many <throat> very good players now, is testament to him. It certainly is. I mean, you look at his average there, just under 114, just trying to equate that to actual legs. He's throwing an average of 13 darts every leg throughout the whole of that game. Yeah. Now, that is proper standard. Yeah. And the last seven legs of the match, Mervyn King never threw more than 12 darts, and two of them he won. one 4 one finish and one 2 one yeah, and rightly actually, Phil, for all of the tremendous checkouts he produced, yeah. pointed to Mervyn's 1-4-1 in yeah. leg eight is perhaps the best of the bunch. Yeah, well, I think Phil hit two 180s in the leg and Mervyn hit one, and then yeah. he took the 1-4-1 out just after Phil had hit the 180. Yeah. That's just a class finish, isn't it, at the end of the yeah. day? Very impressive, very impressive. Um, do the rest of the competitors 
when they see Phil Taylor in their side of the draw, as for instance Wayne Mardle and, and Mark Walsh will now think, right, okay, well I can get that far and no far. That's how much I'm going to win at most this week. Do you just give up? I suppose you can't, but well, part of you must feel. The bottom line is you don't want to be in the same half no. as Phil Taylor. Any player who tells you any different is lying. But when you get up there, you will give it a good go. Yeah. And most players down there are capable of beating him. But he's one of those players that always has an A game. He doesn't have the B game on TV. Mm. Even when he's lost, somebody's had to play out of the skin to beat him. Yeah, well put, well put. Of course, Phil is known as the power. There are some very obvious nicknames in darts. There are some less obvious ones. Our net has been delving. Well, the question is this, where would darts be without its nicknames? And come to that, where would the nicknames be without darts? Well, the man who has to contend with all these nicknames on a daily basis is John McDonald's. John, what's your favourite one? Go on. Favourite one of all, I suppose, would have to be the power. Feel the power, Taylor. Um, because the crowd get behind it and, you know, they they kind of um, they get in the swing of things with a nickname. They know when it's coming. Some of them just work, don't they? I mean, 501's oh, yeah. another one like that. It's just classic, isn't it? Absolutely incredible. You know, you do the Hawaii 501 and people are out of their seats and... Yeah, I, you know, it really does work. Without the nickname, it's um, it's flat, very yeah. flat. Yeah. Colin Lloyd, Jaws, what's that all about then? That's an unusual one, yeah. Um, Colin Lloyd with Jaws, yeah. I, mean, yeah, I suppose because he, he used to sort of do this snile towards the audience uh, and the fangs and everything, I think that was uh, the sort of meaning behind that. Yeah, you've got a bit of a problem, you're telling me, with um, with, with the, Mar the, the, what was it, Darth, see, I just did it myself, Darth Maple. Doesn't doesn't exactly roll off the tongue, that one, no, does it? I don't like it, I really don't like that one. And um, but it's uh, it's kind of like John Parts, a real sort of uh, uh, deep character, and, and at last year's World Championships where he was the winner, um, he was accompanied by uh, half the cast of Star Wars, and I, I really find that difficult. Darth Maple, I, I kind of feel that I'm going to say Daft Maple, and you know that wouldn't be right. Yeah, we've got a couple of odd ones, haven't we? Mentor Suljevic, the gentle, don't know about that, and Carlos Rodriguez hasn't got one. Make one yeah, up for him quickly. Make quick. one up for him. I, I suppose he's going to have to, you know, Carlos Rodriguez from Barcelona is playing remarkable. Uh, has no nickname, so we might have to just nickname him No Nickname Carlos, I suppose. For the time being, back to you, Matt the Granny Smith. Granny? I'll get you for that, Bolting. Get you, atomic dustbin. Right, here's what's happening uh, in terms of play tonight. Wins uh, this evening for Alan Tabern over Yellow Class, and that was a great match. A humdinger saw Peter Manley in that lovely pink shirt stride past James Wade 11-9. And Phil Taylor, as we've seen, terrific against Mervyn King, nine legs to three. On stage next, it's Dennis the Menace. Dennis Priestley beat Jan van der Assel five legs to three in round one. He's in decent form despite well-known health problems this year. He's ranked 10 by the PDC, and he's having a chat with Ned. Well, Dennis, Barney against Priestley. I mean, on paper it sounds great, doesn't it? Two of the legends of the game. Yes, it does, yeah. It'd be an interesting game. You know, he, he likes to get a, a, a rhythm going and uh, obviously I take my time, so we'll just have to see how it goes. When you, when you say you take your time, do you do that on purpose? Just no. to slow it down, just to, just to wind him up a little bit? No, uh, none of that? I've done it, I've done it since uh, my county days in the early 80s. I've always uh, been deli deliberate in uh, what I do. Last time out against him? What happened? Well, I, I, uh, I beat him in the final of the Players' Championship in Dublin before the Grand Prix. Um, I think it was three sets to one, so it was yeah, played really well that day. But, I mean, obviously this is a different day and we'll just have to see how it goes. It has no bearing on it. And, of course, you've gone on the record, you know, with, with your condition now and the medication, it does tire you. Mm -hmm. It's a longer format now. We're on to a longer game and it's been a long day waiting for this to come around. How are you feeling? Are you up for it? Yeah, I'm feeling OK. I haven't, I haven't uh, done anything to knock myself up anyway, so <laughs> I can assure you of that. Um, it's just that um, after you know a, a few games, sometimes I feel a little bit, um, as, I, as I said last night, whammy, and then I, I just need to take some chocolate or, or something, uh, an energy drink or something, and then uh, I'll get back on track, I hope. Good luck, sir. Uh, it's a pleasure, thank you. Yes, good to see Dennis here and competing as always. He's up against Barney uh, here this evening, who swept past Andy Jenkins very comfortably in round one, but will doubtfully have it all his own way against Dennis the Menace.